Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Unzan Chitta. Hello! It's good to see all of you. It's good to have you back, Malenta. Everybody wave to Malenta. Yes, very good. We bow. There are a couple of writings that um, are among the most misinterpreted writings in the entire Buddhist canon. They are just taken out of context. The wrong message is gotten from them. Uh, they're taken literally when they really aren't literal. So from the Kalama Sutta, one of the most misinterpreted ones, I'm going to read a, a little bit here. It is proper for you, Kalamas, to doubt, to be uncertain. Uncertainty has arisen in you about what is doubtful. Come, Kalamas. Do not go upon what has been acquired by repeated hearing, nor upon tradition, nor upon rumor, nor upon what is in a scripture, nor upon surmise, nor upon an axiom, nor upon a spacious reasoning, nor upon a bias towards a notion that has been pondered over, nor upon another's seeming ability, nor upon consideration the monk is our teacher. Kalamas, when you yourselves know these things are bad, these things are blamable, these things are censured by the wise, undertaken and observed, these things lead to harm and ill. When you see them, abandon them. The way that that's taken out of context uh, often turns into some sort of if it feels good, do it sort of approach to uh, the practice. Um, it relies on giving oneself too much credit. If your mind is deluded, you can't help but have a deluded outlook goes without saying. If you have a worldly outlook, you'll do worldly things. You'll have that worldly perspective and you won't know any better. It's like ordinary mind is the way. Yes, but if your ordinary mind is the mind of a mass murderer, maybe we should qualify what ordinary mind counts for. In the case of the Kalama Sutta, it would be the mind of Bodhi, right? It's not the mind of all the layers of barnacles that we've accumulated upon our uh, pristine self. It's that original face, our true face, all the way underneath those things that know when things are bad, when things are blamable, these things are censured by the wise, undertaken and observed, these things lead to harm and ill, abandon them. So unless you're working from the Bodhi mind, you're not going to be any closer to liberation than you started. Even if you do all those other things that the Buddha says not to do, you still won't be there. We have to remember that one of the things that Buddhism is kind of famous for is that there are a lot of things that are said 
not to do. There's more nots than there is is's. Lin Ji, uh, one of my favorite quotes of his uh, is that, I have nothing to teach, I only untie knots. That's great. <laughs> we all have it right here, right? Our Bodhi mind, pure, undefiled, true nature, whatever you want to call it, is there. We just have maybe a little too much stuff piled on top of it. Suzuki Roshi said, you're all perfect as you are. You need a little work. Um, so the Kalama Sutta isn't saying to throw everything out out of hand per se. It's saying what not to rely on. It's saying that just because you've heard it, read it, um, seen it in a magazine or a newspaper or on the internet, just because it seems to make sense, just because it seems to make sense to someone else, yeah, don't rely on those things. Don't rely on the monk is our teacher. I always used to put it as the Buddha is saying, hey, don't take my word for it. But you'll see I'm right anyway. He wasn't trying to mislead anybody. He was just trying to keep people from going down the wrong road. Now, Lin Ji also has one of my favorite, favorite, favorite quotes that's often misconstrued. And of course, it's the, if you meet the Buddha on the road, kill the Buddha. And usually everybody just stops there because that's just like so, <gasps> Heretical, oh my God, they want to kill the Buddha. And if you read the rest of it in context, it doesn't really get any better. His actual quote is, if you meet the Buddha, kill the Buddha. If you meet your father, kill your father. Free of everything, you are bound by nothing. Live the life that is given to you. There's also some lines about killing patriarchs and killing our hats and other things that you might be able to kill if you met them on the road. And, and people just like, quite often, if they don't have the heresy reaction, they might have the, yeah, I'm iconoclastic, I'm cool, I'm gonna kill the Buddha, you'll see. And of course, it's not meant literally. Linji was talking metaphorically. Even though we think of Linji as, or at least I do, as the guy who was quick to wield the stick, in this case, what he's talking about was hindrances, right? If you're attached to hearsay and rumor and stuff that someone else said, stuff that you read on the internet, kill them if they're a hindrance. If your family is a hindrance to your liberation, kill them. Not literally. The Buddha himself killed his family in a way when he first left home, right? He didn't physically kill them, but he killed his attachment to them. 
and you know in the 21st century everybody thinks you know oh that's you know child abuse or how uh, deadbeat dad of him was it and personally I just say it happened 2600 years ago and I don't know what the customs were then or any of that and it doesn't matter what matters is that he left home and he found a way to liberation so when we run into these hindrances what do we do it'd be easy to say oh well we kill them you just said kill them to which i could for starters reply so you're taking my word for it? Isn't that what the Kalama Sutta was saying not to do, among other things? Just because I said something doesn't mean you should do it. If there's a knot or two that I can untie, great, you're welcome. But if you expect anything um, that's not an explanation of what's already inside you, you've come to the wrong guy. So there's one other thing I want to read you from Lin Ji. And like I said, we usually think of him as the guy that's quick to wield the stick. But this one is uh, a little bit more gentle, I would say. So he says, when you meet Buddhas, you speak to Buddhas. When you meet ancestral teachers, you talk to ancestral teachers. When you meet arhats, you talk to arhats. When you meet hungry ghosts, you talk to hungry ghosts. Everywhere you go in your travels through the various lands, you teach and transform sentient beings without ever departing from this one moment of mindfulness. Wherever you are, the pure light extends in all directions and the myriad phenomena are one suchness. In the Diamond Sutta, the Sutra, rather, the uh, Buddha says that in that entire Sutra, he hasn't spoken a single word. How can that be? It's got X number of chapters, 32 of them, I believe. When the Buddha was about to have uh, his Parinirvana, uh, he's reported to have said, life is very short. Please investigate it closely. So we get to investigate it closely. We see what's in our Bodhi heart, our Bodhi mind, our original face, Buddha nature, any number of other words for it that should be killed. The great way is beyond words and scriptures, but we use them skillfully when we need to. So we can talk to the hungry ghosts, so we can talk to the arhats or whomever. So in closing, I'd like to ask everybody, so who's your free favorite Zen teacher? Who is your favorite Zen teacher? Kill him. In fact, if you meet me on the road, you know what to do.